31 simple words constitute almost every American school child's morning. For nearly 13 years of schooling, one will say the Pledge of Allegiance about 2,340 times. But should we have to? I definitely think students should have to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, if, you know, I, I think that there should be some loyalty to the American flag, particularly since they're taking advantage of the benefits that this country has to offer for them. As of right now, saying the pledge is completely optional, and Ryan Lee thinks it should stay that way. Well, I think that students should have to respect the pledge, not necessarily get up out of their seats, because early in the morning and usually people are, you know, laying their head down on their desk or listening to their iPod, you know. They, I mean, I think they should have to be quiet during it, not necessarily get out of their seats. Well, I, I guess in the mind of some, there is some kind of a middle ground, but if you are benefiting from anything that uh, that flag represent, like freedom to go to school, uh, freedom to vote. Political differences aren't the only reasons preventing students from standing and honoring America. For years, religious doctrines, such as the Mormon faith, have discouraged reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. But the Pledge Faithful stands strong. I was raised a little bit differently. My father was an officer in the Army, and I grew up moving around, and I I'm definitely of the belief that if you don't have any loyalty to this country that you know maybe you should go somewhere else. Some would prefer not to have a pledge at all, but that isn't the issue for most Americans. Religious and political discrepancies continue to cloud the image of the pledge today, and they most likely will for some time. For ENN, I'm David Ward. The George Jenkins track team is off to the races with their 2007 season. Having already dominated four track meets this year, the team is well on their way to yet another productive season. They have a lot of potential to meet all of their goals, and Coach Williams discusses these goals. Our goal for this season is to uh, win county and do a great job in uh, regionals and state. Although the track team encourages new athletes to try out, much of this year's team is composed of returning yes. members. We got a lot of uh, returning guys that went to state last year, so uh, we should do a great job. The George Jenkins track team hold practices like these every day from 2.30 until 4, and both coaches and athletes alike hope that these practices will lead them to another state title. Austin Sondras, ENN. In today's society, one can't even turn on the television without being plagued with stories full of controversy. However, the ultra-sensitive nature of modern-day culture leaves some topics increasingly taboo. Religion is among them. But what would happen if this controversy surrounding religion were brought into light? With advances in modern science, many people have begun to doubt the fundamental principle behind most major world religions, the existence of a higher power, or God. Students here at George Jenkins have formulated their own opinions. I personally just believe that science and Christianity can work together and they're, they're part of each other and there's no right or wrong for science because science was created by God. I'm more of a science person than a theology, Bible kind of thing. Uh, I don't think the Bible is very... Um, I don't think it can be validated in a lot of ways. This controversy reaches past the classroom and into the realm of science. Richard Dawkins, the author of The God Delusion and professor of public understanding of science at Oxford University, claims that there is no God and supports the theory of evolution. Upholding the opposing argument are people like Francis Collins, director of the National Human Genome Research Institute. Collins and others like him believe what most Americans would like to believe. As Time Magazine states, we want it all. We want to cheer on science's strides yet still humble ourselves on the Sabbath. We seek those who possess religious conviction, but also scientific achievements to credibly argue the widespread hope that science and God are in harmony, that indeed science is of God. Reporting for ENN, I'm Allie Thompson. The Polk Theater is an essential staple to Lakeland life. Ever since it was built in 1928, this theater has been the most memorable part of the town. 
hosting a variety of performances and movies. Elvis Presley played here in 1956. He had just come off of his first Ed Sullivan appearance. Uh, I think one of the most interesting facts about that performance, the old ticket stubs that we have found, say that um, admission was a dollar and a quarter. On the outside, it appears boring and square, minus the big flashy antique sign. On the inside, you're visually assaulted by the splendor of the Italian villa before your very eyes. However, the golden age of the theater has passed, surviving today as a nonprofit organization, relying heavily on grants, donations, ticket sales, and the help from volunteers like you. It would be impossible for us to do all of our events with paid staff. So we are absolutely dependent on volunteers for almost every event we have here. Volunteering here at this historic building is certainly a possibility, but not only is it a great place to volunteer, but a good place to hang out. And 100% of your patronage goes to the upkeep of the theater. So grab a date and bring yourself down to the majestic Polk Theater. The George Jenkins boys basketball team has just concluded their 2006-2007 season. Trying out for the team, the boys knew that they were making a huge commitment. Having practiced two hours every day, they were able to end their season with a final record of 4-18. and 18. Coach Gauss talks about his first season as head coach and the challenges his team faced. Adjusting to a new coach, adjusting to new expectations, a new system has been a definite process that we've gone through. But I think the guys are really starting to play some pretty good basketball. And uh, I don't think the record will indicate how good a basketball team we are. Although we are not known as district champions this year, the team has prospered in enhancing teamwork and is doing their best while adapting to a new coach. Bryson Becton, a senior at George Jenkins, talks about his final year on the team. Well, uh, we worked as a team good, but we lacked the inside presence, so that's where we got beat a lot of times. We won some, we lost some, but a lot of the losses were tough. They were, some of them were close, but Coach really, uh, he did a good job bringing us together, so it was fun. While others may not recognize their true accomplishments, the team has come a long way and has high intentions of improving for next year. Austin Sodgrass, ENF. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina ravaged through the southwest portion of the United States. The Category 5 storm ripped through communities and destroyed lives. Here at George Jenkins, Key Club's Tailgate Park was also destroyed. A fixture at George Jenkins since 1995, Tailgate Park was the place to be before sporting events here at school. Now $10,000 and hours of labor are needed to restore the park to its original form. Coach Doc is head of the restoration. We're going to have roughly, roughly six or seven picnic tables, which will cost $160 a piece. And we're asking families who would like to donate and buy a picnic table uh, for $160, and we'll have their names on a plate saying it was dedicated by that family. Approximately 6,500 of these bricks are needed to fill this area at Tailgate Park. And this job goes to the over 125 students who are currently part of Key Club. These students devote two hours every Saturday to help get this project done. But the question remains, how long is that going to take? Coach Doc gives his estimate. We have a uh, target area of finishing this park sometime in the next four to five weeks. So it's only a matter of time before the tailgate park becomes a hot spot at George Jenkins once again. Austin Sodgrass, ENN. Well, my job's a uh, nuisance alligator trapper. Um, we get complaints to people's houses to uh, gators that are bothering them, come up in the yard, come after their animals, fear for their kids, um, and they f give us complaints, and we work those complaints one by one. And, as one would expect, this is one of the most hardcore careers out there. But to Scott, it's just a job. It's not, not too bad. I mean, you, you just have to watch your surroundings all the time, make sure you're you got good, safe getaway sometimes. Scott stays busy simply because of growth. People move into the state at an astounding rate, and many of them close to the water. But Scott says that simple steps can be taken to make sure that humans and alligators coexist peacefully. The main thing is not to feed them, uh, not to think that they're your pets. A lot of people 
get attached to them because they see them all the time and they they want them to come around them and then they get, become too you know acquainted with people and then the people that feed them you know that's that's even a state law that you're not allowed to feed an alligator and when you do that they take the conception that anybody that's around the water is going to feed them. Although his job is thrilling, Scott prefers a different aspect of his occupation. Letting a kid see an alligator, you know, maybe talking to them, uh, you know, it's kind of fun watching their eyes be able to touch an alligator because not every day, you know, you get to touch an alligator. Scott, however, doesn't always go it alone. He is periodically assisted by his son Peyton and by Lakeland native Dallas. Unfortunately, this isn't a career with great job availability, but one thing's for certain, it is very fun to watch. For ENN, I'm David Ward. Everyone knows what happened on September 11th, but few citizens are doing something that makes a difference in honoring the victims of that terrible fall day of 2001. FCCLA, with Mrs. Elson and Sergeant Elson, decided to create a memorial in the courtyard of George Jenkins High School to commemorate the lives of police officers, firefighters, and civilians that were lost five years ago. I think this memorial shows that, uh, that we will never forget and that the student body, even though some of them were only you know, in the seventh grade, sixth or seventh grade, that now they have a more truer understanding of what exactly happened on American soil and the, and the lives that were taken from us and how those people's lives will never be forgotten. Many people came to visit this memorial throughout the day yesterday to pay their respects and show gratitude to the victims of the terrorist attacks of September 11th and also those who are fighting now to keep our nation safe and free. I think that this is a great way for the students at Jenkins to get involved in showing their tribute to all the people who died in 9-11. Hopefully none of those almost 3,000 people died in vain. Make sure you take a moment to reflect on perhaps the greatest tragedy to befall our country in many years. For Eagle News Network, I'm Libby Morris. On the corner of Massachusetts and Parker Street sits an after-school tutoring program. Parker Street Ministries was established to help children of the Parker Street community. Four days a week, they provide a snack, basic homework help, simple learning games and activities, and even a Bible study for children kindergarten through seventh grade. We sat down with Christina Allen, who has been with the organization two of the eight years that it has been around, to find out how Parker Street got started. I think they just saw a lot of need for um, for education in the neighborhood. The child, a lot of the parents were asking for help with their kids with their homework. They just are unable to help and that's how the tutoring part started. Although Parker Street's main goal is to help children improve their grades, they don't stop there. Being a Christ-centered organization, they are committed to individuals, families, and community restoration. They also strive to create unity in each individual family and are always welcoming new families. Tim Mitchell, head of Parker Street, only asks for one thing. We certainly would appreciate having any volunteers we could have. We are in desperate need of as many volunteers on a regular basis. Um, we cannot do what we do without volunteers, so please come on out and volunteer. By simply volunteering your time and effort to these children in need, you can make a small impact that may alter their lives forever. To take action, you can reach Christina Allen at 863-286-4376 or email her at christinaallen2005 at yahoo.com. Law is uh, one of the fastest growing fields in, um, in the state and in the nation. George Jenkins recently received a grant for the introduction of a legal academy, the first of its kind in Polk County. But why a law school? What we take a survey of 